I finally shared my true feelings about pivot tables and people had questions. Lots of questions. Valid questions, but uh, questions nonetheless. And what I'm trying to do in this video is focus on those who understood my intent and wanted to learn more about how I build these presentation layers using dynamic functions that I believe offer a lot more flexibility and your ability to format and set up the way that you ultimately want so that it represents you and your brand and the quality of work that you are willing to put out into the universe. So let's just go ahead and jump right in, get our hands dirty. And I want to start by saying that if you want to get your mitts on this data so that you can follow along, go check out my Excel for Analytics project series where you can download the data and work through some of that project and get yourself to the place here where you've got this cleaned data and you can work off of that. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check out my previous video on pivot tables and I'll link that as well. But for now, this is what we're gonna do. This is what we created. This is my competition to a pivot table where I've got here a, a region table broken out by quarter, volume by region and quarter. So we've got this basic data with client ID, date, volume, quarter, and region. The quarter and region are both functions that are both using the date to create a quarter and using the customer ID to locate their region. And we're gonna rely on this data set to produce this table. This is a list, it's a dynamic array that's taking the unique values from the region table and I chose to sort it alphabetically. And then this is taking the unique values from the quarter column and I've chosen to transpose that so that it comes out horizontally. So that gives us a cube that we now need to populate. And then this is the data, the volume data that is in the cube. So this is two sum ifs, both grabbing volume data, but the top value is summing based on region and quarter, and it's referencing those dynamic array functions that we just talked about. And then the bottom sum ifs is taking the volume just by quarter so that what we have is a total and then we're using vstack at the end of the day to stack one on top of the other and give this effect where you've got a total. Note that in this version, I've got a hard-coded total here. So if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show how to make this thing fully dynamic, including the total. But first things first, we gotta, we gotta get this thing going. So let's recreate this beast and Get, get on the road. So we're going to start by just typing region. The intent now is that everything around that that we just typed is going to be fully dynamic. So that's the cool stuff that we're going to get into. So let's just start. What we did here, and oh, by the way, I want to attract attention to the formulas. Some people take their formatting very, very seriously when it comes to functions. I'm one of those where if it makes sense to break apart, usually if you're dealing with something very complicated, Give your viewers or people who may inherit your file someday a break. Try to make it as easy to follow as possible. The intent with this is not to make it more complicated or intimidating. It's really just to try to clear things up. You can definitely take a function like this and just write it straight away. It's not going to take up you know multiple lines and there's only one nested function, uh, but to each their own. When you get into this guy, it probably does make more sense to break it down so that you can see very clearly how it's working. But again, we'll, we'll get there in just a moment. So let's start by just grabbing our regions, shall we? So to start, we're just gonna go equals sort. And you don't have to sort, by the way. You could very easily just grab a unique. Uh, this is just to maintain some level of order when we're doing this. And we're gonna, our array that we wanna use is going to be unique. And I'm not gonna do any special formatting on this one. I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna close the unique and I'm gonna close the sort. And then if you just hit enter, just like that, we're already on our way. We've got all of our regions laid out just the way that it looks above. And I think we're ready for the quarters. So let's go ahead and give that a go. This time, uh, I'm going to show you just as an example, we're going to go equals unique, and I'm going to grab my quarters. And I'm just going to close parenthesis, enter. And you see here, it drops it down vertically. That's the orientation of the data. That's how it's doing it. That's why we use the transpose function. So I'm gonna hit F2, go back to the beginning here, and I'm gonna write transpose. 
and then I'm going to close both parentheses, enter, and there we go. Now it's spilling out to the right, region down bottom. We're feeling good about life. And note, I'm going to go ahead and just hard key total down here. And again, we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, now for the fun part, we're going to do two sum ifs and we're going to vertically stack one on top of the other. But to start, I'm just going to do the first sum ifs. So let's think of it this way. We just want to be able to sum by region and quarter. That's very simple, right? So we go equals sum ifs. I always do sum ifs. I'm not a fan of sum. I'm not a fan of count if or, or sum if or count if. I feel like the syntax of sum ifs not only makes more sense, but it's far more flexible. You can have more criteria and it's one less function to have to remember because the syntax of sum if is different and just forget about it. Just use sum ifs. All right. Sum range. What are we summing? We're summing volume. Okay. The criteria range. Where are we going to find the criteria? You can pick your poison here. I'm going to start with quarter. So where am I going to find the criteria for quarter? It's right here. And what I'm going to do is add a little hash. And what that does is reference now the, the full array and then comma for my criteria two. We're going to do region and we're going to do the exact same thing where we grab our region, hash it to get the array. Look at that. We've got our data. It, it's looking close, but we need to add more, right? We need those totals. So how do we get the totals to be part of the dynamic function? Well, that's where vstack comes in. So what I'm going to do is actually come up to the top. I'm going to write vstack tab, and I'm going to do a line break here. I'm not going to break it out by, by full criteria, but I'm going to just show it in two lines here. So sum ifs, that's the array one. And then the second array is going to be sum ifs. We're going to also grab our volume data. But instead of grabbing our region, we just want the quarter this time because we want the, the totals to be by quarter. And it's going to effectively be the same here. Add the hash, close that parenthesis, and then we need to close our vstack. I'm going to go alt down, close the vstack, enter. And now we have our totals attached. This is looking pretty good, guys. We're getting really close. So now we have the great honor of adding our conditional formatting. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and add our conditional formatting. What I'm going to do is actually highlight a much larger area than what is needed, but that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use the mouse. Don't I, I'm, I'm in the no mouse club. <laughs> you, you should be too, but that doesn't mean we don't use the mouse, right? We, we use it when it makes sense. I'm going to come up here, conditional formatting, and I'm going to create a new rule. I'm going to use a formula to determine what to format. And each of these, we're only using two conditional formats here. Each one is going to be a two criteria situation, which means we need to use an and function. And the way that this works is basically, is it true or is it false? And if it's true, if the conditions are true, then we're going to use this formatting. So, and another tricky thing that people have uh, issues with coming to conditional formatting is knowing what values to assign. So it all starts by what you highlight. This is the effective area. So it's what, H12 down to, what is it? It's a uh, P21. That's my effective area that I'm applying this conditional formatting to. It could be anything, really, but that is important when we get into writing the function. So I'm going to write the very first one, and this is going to be for the top line, the region. Okay, We're going to go equals and open parenthesis. First condition is that H12, and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of H, so the column needs to be consistent for this first criteria. If it's not in column H, I don't care about it. I only care about this first column where this exists. H, 12, the row doesn't matter, so that can move up and down. Equals, quote, region, quote. That's condition one. Condition two is H, 12. So again, the top left most cell in our area that we're applying the formatting. Uh, I want it to start there, but it's not locked. It's fully uh, dynamic throughout. I want this to be is not blank because if it's blank, we don't want it filling in, right? That's 
the rule. So if this is true, then I want something to happen. So what I want to happen is I want it to be bold and I want it to be filled with black and I want the font to be colored in white. Now if I hit OK and I hit OK one more time, three, two, one, it worked. Look at that. So not only did it apply it here, but it's going to apply all the way out here and we'll see that in just a minute when I add a little bit more data just to play around with this thing. Now we need our second condition. So conditional formatting, new rule again, use a formula again. And the first part is almost going to be the same. Actually, the whole thing is going to be just about the same. Uh, we're going to go equals and open parenthesis. And again, it's going to be dollar sign H 12 equals this time it's total. Okay. Total because we want this to apply to the total line comma. And then again, H 12. This should not be blank. Same thing. Basically the same condition, just the word is different. Now I'm going to change my formatting. I want it to be bold and I want there to be a border on the top. And we're going to go OK. And if I hit OK, boom, look at that. It applied it. We have victory. We have now created this table. And to make sure that it works, what we're going to do, I have over here this Q3 and Q4 data. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop it down here on the bottom. Oh, I've already got it there. Boom. There we go. We come up and look at that. Ta-da. It's all fully dynamic. It fully updated. Now for the bonus, the bonus that I was telling you about. If by chance we get a new region, let's just say that uh, at some point Latin America is going to be split between Central America and South America, something like that. And all of a sudden we start having, instead of LATAM, we've got SAM, South America, boom. Oh my God, it all broke. It all broke. The only thing that seems to be working here is uh, the totals. And we've got a spill. And the spill is there because of the total. So what happens if we delete the total? Oh, interesting. Now it works. It works, but we lost our total. Well, that's going to be a pain in the butt if we need to keep writing our total hard keyed. So how do we make sure that this thing is fully, like truly dynamic in, in both the going to the right and going down? Let's get into it. All right, so first off, I'm gonna undo what I just did, both of the things. And we are now gonna prep our data. And I'm gonna use this data set now as an example. I'm gonna just delete my total. We don't need it anymore. Notice the conditional formatting went away. Now what I'm gonna do is this, we already learned about the V stack. Let's use it again. This time what we're going to do is say V stack. I'm going to go alt down. So first it's this sort unique. We got our data, right? Go to the end, comma. What's the next array? It doesn't have to actually be an array. It could just be a thing that you want to append. So I'm going to write total here. And then I'm going to go down, close parenthesis, enter. And look at that. Now we have a new problem. You see what the problem is? Now this top sum ifs is trying to figure out what on earth do I sum as a total? It's getting nothing, right? It's just saying, hey, there's nothing here in total. So then it's appending the total down below. So how do we fix this? We've just created a new problem for ourselves. We're going to use another full, cool function here. And that is the drop. So there's take and drop. These are two really powerful functions. Don't get too carried away with them though. Uh, once you start to see the power, you're going to want to use them in places that it's actually going to be more cumbersome to work with. But this is a good example of a situation where it might make sense to do it. And what it's doing is the take function, you're basically taking an array and saying, take only this, like the top row, the bottom row, this sort of thing. The drop function, you're telling it, drop the top row, drop the bottom row, whatever it is. If you see where we're going with this, you're going to see how this is going to be handy. So in this top function, this is the one where we're having problem, right? Because it's wanting to sum down as far as there is data here in this array, and it's running out of room. So what we actually need to do is drop the very bottom entry here. And so if we do that, we go here this h13 array, that's this guy, 
we're just going to write drop. And then what we want to do is drop the last row. So to do that, you just go minus one, okay? And then we close that parenthesis. And if we hit enter, fingers crossed, oh my God, it worked. It worked, look at that. So now, now if we go ahead and we change this to Sam, look at that. Not only did the region expand, our total moved down, all of our sums worked, we are, we are in business. And then this old one obviously ran into some issues. Meanwhile, if you were on a pivot table, it would have never changed because we haven't hit refresh a single time. You'd still be looking at Q1 and Q2 with four regions. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show in this video, and I hope you got some value out of this. Once again, if you haven't checked out the Excel for Analytics project series, I'd encourage you to do that. Lots of really good lessons in there and uh, helpful tips and tricks for working through data. And if you want to argue about pivot tables, go check out the other video and uh, we can talk about it there. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.